Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you all again. <laughs> Just waiting for the uh, confirmation that we're live, so I don't want to say too much. There we go. Welcome, everybody. Good to see you again. Seems like it's been a while, I know. But we're back, and it actually wasn't that long ago. I think it was only a week ago, and we were in the middle, and still are, in the middle of our review and study of Revelation chapters 11 through 13. But because this is the day that the Watchtower Society celebrates its memorial, we do it as well since last year. We, we partake pretty much regularly when we meet weekly as part of our Christian Witnesses of Jaw live discussion show, which we would normally have had yesterday. But as you'll know, if you follow the channel and um, get the notifications, then we moved it to Sunday. Sometimes we mix it up, but we try to be regular every Saturday. Where we can meet together as best we can and at least encourage each other in the worship of Jah, God the Father of the Bible, and in the promotion and honoring and following of the Messiah, whom we accept as Jesus. And we do that by following the Golden Rule primarily, treating others the way we want to be treated, right? By not being hypocrites. We are sinful, we make mistakes, but we don't go around, you know, telling everybody these are good things when we make a mistake. No, we feel bad and we try to correct it and then we do our best not to repeat it. Sometimes we can fall into a pattern of behavior that's difficult. So we should be prepared to work with each other and ourselves, but not um, not accepting, you know, anything that's that's against what we know to be correct, not just according to the Bible, but basic human living, right? How would you want to be treated? That pretty much answers everything. Some people might try to be clever and say, well, I would, wouldn't mind if someone hurt me. Well, then you're a pervert, right? <laughs> That's not normal humanity. By a pervert, I mean, well, it can be one of many things, right? Usually it involves sexual perversion, which is all over the place and so deserving of that description because it's a perversion, right? Anything that's not normal, anything that ruins or um, dishonors or distorts what is normal is a perversion. And so, right, it's not like you're making something better when you pervert it. Not, not when we use that word and not a, any of the examples I'm thinking about. But we get perversions of different kinds as well. So we have to watch that, you know. We don't want to promote perv, but we're also accepting of people who have problems like I was just talking about, because we all do. It's not about not having problems or being better than each other. It's about not justifying things we know are wrong. And that's a hard thing for a lot of people to do, because it's difficult to simultaneously struggle with something while you're saying it's wrong, right? Because you don't want to be thought of as doing something wrong. Who does? But you have to be honest with yourself as well. If you lie to yourself, you're just hurting yourself more. Because as I just mentioned, right, things that are usually distorted or a perversion of the norm, they don't make it better. If it makes the norm better, well, it's an improvement, right? It's, it's not a perversion. You're improving something. Look, and it works better this way. Oh, okay, that's great. No one's hurt. No one's losing their life, right? Rectal function's good. Okay, psh, we're on. We're, we're good. <laughs> but that's not usually what happens. And it's the same thing for spiritual things, you know? We get, like, we see in the Bible, we see a lot of spiritual perverts. We see people who distort. Satan is, of course, the preeminent spiritual pervert, right? He perved it right there in Eden. He knew that she appeared to be susceptible. He, he could tell he, he was there in the garden, and according to Ezekiel, it may even have been appointed as a special cherub in the garden in a way that allowed him to become 
especially familiar with Adam and Eve so that he could, his desire was brought out, right? That's probably why he was put there. That's how John, gee, they know. <laughs> They'll find out, right? And they will see, and they don't want it to happen that way, but what are they going to do, right? Punish him before he does anything? That wouldn't make any sense, not that I can see, and it's not anything that we would do in, in decent humanity. Unfortunately, in a society or in a world or in a creation where decisions are allowed, right, within a limited realm of existence, right? It's not like we can make so many decisions we can overthrow God or challenge his rule, but he created us within this sphere, this earth, this universe, where our decisions count and they affect things to a certain extent, but nothing he can't and doesn't manage and control or redirect or influence, but he can allow things to unfold and often does. And so within that range of existence, we get truth and we get perversion, right? We get people trying to do the right thing and we get people who just like doing what's wrong. And that's just the way they choose to be. So Jah allows these things. These are, you might think of them, well, why, as many people do, why, why does God allow this stuff? Well, exactly what are you proposing? Right, is my, my question usually. What, what is it you're saying? What would be the alternative to not allowing us to choose even bad things that can damage or hurt things or people? So, if God allows it, then then obviously it's for a purpose, right? It's for a reason, so that he can determine things in ways that he can judge and continue or discontinue. Seems to me. It's very often how we do things, at least, and his way would be similar, if not, and greater, of course, right? If we're in his image. But when it comes to other perversions, <laughs> right, we get a lot of teachings out there, especially today, and it can be hard. It can be very difficult for people to feel comfortable serving God and not doing it only and feeling it only because you're with a bunch of people who think that's the only or at least a, an approved way to worship God. And yeah, that can make it easy. More people. Let's read a text. We're doing our memorial special, and we're doing it on this day, as I was mentioning. Be doing it today because it's the Watchtower's memorial celebration, and we're not obviously we're not trying to compete with Watchtower. My my concern, and some of us others who are concerned, is that it's not just that we don't agree with the way Watchtower teaches people should or shouldn't partake or how they do their memorial. It's more to give people who are disillusioned with Watchtower. So it's for us, because. but again, we already do this, like I mentioned. So if you want to join us, we partake pretty regularly. There's no reason not to. The Bible doesn't limit it uh, to one day a year. That's not what Jesus said. But if that's what you want to do, that's okay too. Even if you're with us and you only want to partake one day a year, hey, we're not here to force you to do things. We're just trying to get along in the easiest way possible to make it easiest as possible for Christians to be Christians in a, in a hard world where it's not easy, where we already have enough to deal with. Okay, so if we this, this celebration, this memorial, this partaking Jesus body and blood, this is one of the few things that that we could actually build something around, right? That we could build something around in a way in your local community. We can do it. We do it online. Of course, it's special for us. But, you know, you only need one other person like we regularly talk about and like we're going to read in a moment. And like you probably already know, Jesus teaches, right? In Matthew 18. So you have one other person with you locally, like right near you physically then that's all you need. And these don't have to be an hour, hour and a half long meetings. You can do it briefly, right? Five minutes, come together, greet each other, understand what your trials are in, in this world as Christians, trying to do the right thing. You're only responsible for your neighbor, right? Well, your neighbor's right there. So you don't, this worldwide vision sometimes people have or that's been put upon them 
makes it hard to just localize, right? To, to just accept the task you actually have to fulfill that's much easier when it comes to your vision and, and focus than worldwide. <clears throat> yeah, that's great if you know that you're part of something and it's not going on, but what can you really affect, right? You can only really affect, now through these means, still different, but outside of that, physically, that's where you are. So you got one other person and you guys maybe come together briefly, right? Maybe you even work with somebody and you're both Christian witnesses of Jah or followers of Jah and you worship worship one God, the Father, through Jesus. And you can follow the golden rule. Hey, that's it, right? Everything else is up to you anyway. As long as you don't violate those three, well, we'll just, you know. So you guys are together and you maybe work together. You do some activity it would take, it's, it's not meant to be like a bunch of wine and, and bread. It's a symbol, something where you both share a moment together. Probably in a situation like that where it's just a two of you, a prayer, a text, boom, partake, right? Think of the early Christians that we're going to read about more when we resume. We're going to take a month off, some memorial special, but we're kind of in the middle in our weekly show of a deep study of Revelation 11 through 13. Well, I'm going to take pretty much April off. And then the first week of May, I'll return. And then we'll resume picking up from the uh, destruction of Jerusalem that we just finished about. And then reading through to the uh, middle of the second century. Now, as part of that, we're going to read, as we've read before in other videos, the letter of trade, uh, Pliny to Trajan and Trajan's reply and, show, and it, how it shows that the early Christians, they were pretty basic. They just, like, like you read in the New Testament. But Pliny describes through his interrogations, right, and writing to Trajan about what's going on here, that they just met every morning, they partook, and they promised each other not to lie and do other various things that are explicitly forbidden in the Bible. That's it. And honoring Jesus. And so... Just like we're taught in Philippians 2 and everywhere else, right? He's the one God has appointed. He's the one through whom we go to God. He effectively is God to us. Just like we know, it's not uncommon for the sons of God, but it is uncommon for this son of God at this time because of what he went through and all that he's been given and what he's accomplished in God's name by becoming a man and lower than and then be raised up, right? To the one who gave him his new name and authority, power, all of it. So we are, it is different, but it's not so different. You can't understand it like we've been understanding it in our various discussions, writings, and readings of the Bible. Speaking of which, let's go to Matthew 18. Welcome everybody to our Memorial Special 2024. It's our second one that we've done uh, since we started our Christian Witnesses of Jaw Live discussion, usually a weekly Saturday show. Sometimes we'll move it around, but... Most Saturdays, now next month, April, there won't be a live show. But I'll be back in May, and there's plenty of live shows already. If you're kind of new, just watch some of those earlier ones, and um, I think you'll find some benefit to some of it, at least. And we also partake. After episode one, we agreed, hey, let's just partake after, you know, after each meeting. Now, I mentioned sometimes how you could meet maybe with just a couple people before work or, you know, going to the gym even or whatever. Maybe after, right? Depends, right? Just taking a brief one. It's not always convenient. If you've got the bread and the wine. Someone comes to your house, maybe give them a ride somewhere briefly, right? You got it ready. It only takes a few minutes. Share a scripture, share a thought, brief prayer, right? That's a good thing. I don't do public prayers here usually. I more just talk in a more direct way. Right. Well, there's not always a need to be a formal address to God and it can be more conversational. Even, but I don't always or even ever really do the formal prayers here because, uh, well, Jesus said not to. And you can interpret that differently if you want. But I interpret it in this way. I feel that. I just don't feel like that's a good thing for me to do. If you do, I'm not going to judge you for it because obviously you feel comfortable doing it. So I wouldn't be able to know how that works, right? That's something between you and God. Now, if you go on and on and you repeat yourself and all those things that Jesus says make you a hypocrite, well, maybe I'll come up to you like Jesus also says in Matthew 18 that we're going to read, I know. 
But if you're act- actively acting like he says not to act, like, yeah, I might come up to you and say, hey, have you read this chapter of the Bible? <laughs> right? I, I get people who come to me often and, and don't like things I say or you know, words I use, especially words like stupid or dumb. And, and, and I tell them, well, do you have the book of Proverbs in your Bible? <laughs> and there are other texts you can use, right? But But Proverbs really is about stupid people, dummies, right? People who... The Bible says they're they're here to be punished, right? They're, there's a reason they're here. And if you don't understand the difference between those people and the ones who aren't going to get that kind of punishment, well, you know, you take your chances. I think it's a very important book. And if you believe like me that Jesus is the wisdom in that book, yeah, you tell me that he didn't refer to him. <laughs> anyone as stupid or in some sense, you know, like, hey, what's going on here? This is not normal. Yeah, I'll use other words too, but I don't think any of them are really wrong. Some people, there's always a cultural shift. People don't like certain words, like I've said before. People don't like the word retarded, they, but they'll let you use the word dumb. Well, dumb basically used to mean retarded, right? So it's, it doesn't make any sense. It's more just appeasement. If I find I'm doing something just to appease somebody, I'm not going to do that. Not unless I really have a, a reason. Maybe I'll do it for jobs, you know, if it's like um, in a situation. But generally, if I do it for one person, I'll have to do, you know, it'll never stop, you see. So it has to be a situational thing. Something we might say is ad hoc, right? It has to have a, a, be for a particular reason or moment. Um, like honoring a figure or person being before someone in a way. But in general, right, if we go running around trying to appease everybody and change who we are, we won't even know who we are and we won't be anybody. We'll be everybody we are. We'll be the person we are trying to be to the next person who wants us to be something else. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. Now, I do try to moder- I try to be a... Uh, Someone I think you'll learn from and benefit from, um, but otherwise, I'm just here to help people. That's it. I don't do this for money. Um, in fact, I encourage you to keep your money. You're free to you know, do things, but I, everyone here already knows, right? It's not what it's about, right? We're here. Some people do that because they have a lot of money, and they like to. It's just the way they show things. So I'm not going to deny them that, but I'm not going to encourage it either because I don't need it. I do this because I want us to be strong. I want us to be a group of people who continues on and helps people worship the God of the Bible by honoring and promoting the Messiah as we follow the golden rule. That is basically what I'm about and why I do this. And we also talk about other things, and there is more. That's for you to choose. And to associate with people who are going to do it in the way that makes sense according to what the Bible clearly says. We're not going to judge you over that. You're going to stand before the master. This isn't about me. Unless it's one, two, or three. The things Jesus said are explicitly necessary for life. So beyond that, we're trying to make it easy for people to take accountability. Right? We're here to help and help you be accountable for yourself and help others as you can. We're not here to be accountable for you. And that's often the problem people have. They want other people to be accountable for them. And and if you don't agree with them, well, you know, you're making them feel bad. Well, as I've said, and as people know, we're not here to cater to your feelings. This goes back to the old appeasement stuff, right? I've mentioned earlier. Watchtower people, you know, they really don't like that we do this at all every week or especially on the day they're doing it, right? <laughs> they probably think I'm doing it to like compete with them. No, and, and really deep down the ones who watch the show know that's not true. But there are people who want, like they may not want to go to Watchtower Memorial because they know all the stuff that Watchtower does that is clearly not biblical. Let's just leave it at that. I don't want to hear it, right? It's not the place to delve into the 
misinterpretations of Watchtower. We give them credit. I give them credit. I probably, of all people, is that is that true? <laughs> probably. I, I don't really care, but I'm trying to think literally, genuinely, right? I probably do as much, if not more, than anyone on this planet. Apart from someone officially, you know, in Watchtower. I Outside of that, I probably do more with my books, Joe's Witnesses, Defended Editions, even three dissertations, right? It's not all bad. Right? They always focus on the bad and they forget the good. That's what it's all about, though, the bad and the good. And that's why you guys have this problem. You refuse to address the bad and you only want to look at the good. Well, you know, anyone could do that. It takes a little more courage to look at the problem. And we've seen the problem and we realized, you know what? That's not worth compromise. These problems you guys have with Memorial and with chronology. But sticking with Memorial, right? So in Watchtowers, you know, many of you who are kind of new maybe to this show, you're still a little unfamiliar with what we do and partaking, partaking especially for recovering Watchtower witnesses. That's going to be a little hard for you because, well, I mean, it depends, right? For some, it may be easy. But because Watchtower downplays partaking for most people, right? Unless you're anointed, you're not encouraged in any way to part. You will, you know, you'd be... You'd be look at, looked at a little strange if you partook. So, right, you're going to have that residual feeling of, should I do this? Is, because you, you've been used to that kind of system where the, the mindset is shared with people that we don't do this. It's not for us, right? It actually is for you. It is for us. And I do understand that mindset. I once shared it. But once I realized that, that the reason for this difference, you know, we'll just cover this real briefly with the whole Watchtower thinking so that those who are here, you're from Watchtower, you're still kind of working out what to do, this whole partaking thing, which we will do at the end of the, the discussion. We'll go about an hour and a half. We're about a half hour in. I try to keep it to 60, 90 minutes on these specials, right? So, but just finishing up, because I want, you know, those of you who are new, you, you're kind of in this mind, this period of, of time where your mind is thinking about what to do. I think you know what to do. It's just that, as I mentioned, that residual shared thinking of this isn't for us. Well, why isn't it for us? Well, because in Watchtower, time is set up from... 1914, in terms of the whole great crowd and anointed. More so into the 30s, but because 1914 connects to 1918, 1919, and the appointment of the faithful slave, I'm not going to get into it. Let's just deal with it. That then leads them into the 1930s, Right. Remember, in the 1920s, they thought it was all going to be done, 1925. So now they're in the 1930s. And there's all these people there. And Rutherford gave that talk and said, you know, behold, the great crowd. And really around that time is when they began to separate people into this group of anointed, the generation that wouldn't pass away, and then the great crowd who would be the group that goes into the new earth, right? So when you look at it in terms of watchtower thinking, it it does make some sense. Now, I'm not saying it's correct. I don't believe it is. Once you realize that, then it, of course, and you see the other things, then it is a different deal. But now I want you to remember though, and you saw what I, the way you, when you look at it from Watchtower perspective, right? when the when Watchtower witnesses, they partake of the memorial, right? They don't think they should partake. We do. Well, why? Well, we don't believe we're part of this group 
that is different from the anointed Christians. But there is a different group. It's just, and this isn't required belief, but the way I have interpreted it and explained it and what many Christian witnesses of Jah also seem to think, is that this great crowd involves the nations, all the nations that are gathered before Jesus' throne, the same nations that you great crowd in the Watchtower think you, you are, told you are, but you're not. It, it is a great crowd. It is of all nations. But like you are taught, there's a distinction, isn't there, between Christ's brothers, right? Because you did it to the least of these, my brothers, and the sheep that he's talking to and about. Well, so Watchtower separates that into two groups of Christians, right? The Christians who go into the new earth, the Christians who are raised to heaven, I don't, and I don't think the Bible does. The Bible talks about those people washing their robes, right? They're not yet cleaned in the Lamb's blood like the anointed are. The anointed who are described before that are sealed, caught away. Um, they're, they're not at that point where they come out of the Great Tribulation in need of washing their clothes in the Lamb's blood. And that group in Revelation 7 is very pretty much identical to the group in Revelation 21, the mankind. Well, that's because those are the people who treat Christ's brothers well during the tribulation. They're not Christians. Or they'd be his brothers, right? That's who Christians are. He who does the will of my father, my sister, my this one is my brother, my sister, my mother, my father in heaven. This one is my sister, my brother, my mother. So it's not a mystery. But the reason they're not Christians, those in Matthew 25 who are sheep, is really simple. They don't know who Christ's brothers are. And that also is why they cannot be the great crowd in Watchtower. Because they're told whom Christ's brothers are. The anointed, right? Well, then why would they ask? Why, who, 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 where did we see you? Where, when did we see you naked without, and, 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 and thirsty and, and treat you in these ways? They already know that, right? They're already taught. That's the anointed. So they wouldn't be thinking, well, when did we do that? They would be thinking, okay, yeah, we did that. Yeah, we're the sheep. Let's go, right? No, no, it says those people don't know that they were treating Jesus in those ways when they were treating his brothers that way, the Christians, male and female. Brothers is a generic term, like I said earlier when I quoted Jesus, where all the genders and, and things, and he merged them into the one term because of the association spiritually. So, all being, we're all part of the spiritual family, right? Sons of God, right? But that's not a gender. It sounds like it's sons, but it's not in a, in the spiritual realm. Either way, and Jesus defends, explains that too, right? Because that's why we don't marry or be or are given in marriage in the same way that others who are humans do. Because it's not a gender thing. It's not how they're designed. Either way, that's for another time. When it comes to this whole question, though, Right. So we've been talking about various things, but when Jesus talks about those people, he makes it plain. Right. Well, when you, these are my brothers, remember those people that you were helping out when they were being persecuted by the wild beast and they wouldn't take its mark and they were being put to death, they were being persecuted and you helped them. It was them. That's who it was. You didn't know that, but you knew something inside you reached out to my brothers, my followers, and you helped them. And when you did that, you helped me. Right? One who receives me receives also the one who sent me. Just the one who receives the one who I sent receives me. So that's how at least I interpret that. And, you know, I connected with the great crowd of Revelation 7. Again, these aren't necessary things. I believe them, though. When I believe something I stated, but I also qualify it. Because right? I want people to understand 
We're not here to make it difficult to be a Christian. We're here to enforce the very clear and important required teachings of the Bible that lead to life, to help people to avoid dangers, right, pervs, spiritual pervs, like I say, and literal, and to help you have a relationship with God and Jesus and each other based on fundamental Christian principles that are above hypocrisy and that will help you to maintain your faith and, and to keep your life in a good way, regardless of what anyone else around you does. Right? So whether you're in Watchtower, whether you're in another group, or whether you're with us, you know, things happen, and you must continue. And another issue, of course, concern some of us have with Watchtowers, they don't do that. Because they believe this group, this great crowd in, in their organization is, is this end time fulfillment of the people who go through, they have to keep that going. Otherwise, the only way to change that is to say they're not the great crowd or that they are, but they can still partake. One of the two. So they're either going to continue to maintain this ever-present belief that the Tribulation Armageddon are right around the corner. Right, That's why they do that. So that way you, you stay the great crowd. Because if, if Armageddon or the Great Tribulation is, is going to be any second, well, it kind of makes sense that you're the great crowd, right? Because you're going to go right through. Yeah, but they've been saying that since the 1930s. And people who they thought were the great crowd have all died. Now, yes, there are others who have lived on and who now think they're the great crowd. There's no guarantee, though, is there, right? Just like the ones who've died. Maybe Armageddon will come. Maybe the Great Tribulation will happen tomorrow. Maybe you'll go through. But you definitely know whom Christ, who Christ's brothers are, don't you? So that creates a problem with you being that group. <clears throat> Instead, we believe that all Christians are Christ's brothers and partake and are resurrected and given new bodies, spiritual bodies. We believe that the great crowd, that there are humans who are alive during the thousand-year reign, but that those are those approved by Jesus for the way they treat Christ's brothers during the Great Tribulation. Non-Christians who are given an opportunity to live in the new earth and who are tested after the thousand years when Satan is let loose. That's why it says um, that they they circle the holy city and then fire comes down and destroys them, right? So their condition is different from the people who are with Jesus and who are not being who are being surrounded. So there's definitely a distinction. It's just not a distinction between Christians, except for those who do wash their robes and make them white and who don't follow the devil at the end of the thousand years. And then the Bible says, after the end of the thousand years, all the dead are raised up under the sea, under the ground, everywhere. Death in Hades. Hades is emptied. And then they're both destroyed. But all the dead are raised up, just like Daniel talks about, the end times when people will receive what they are due, right? Jesus, just like Jesus says, I'm going to reward you according to your deeds. If you don't think deeds are important, you're not in Christianity. They're essential. Do they lead to your salvation? No. But if you don't think they're important, uh, and if you don't think you're going to be judged according to them, that's incorrect. There are specific things, including demonstrate your faith by your works, you must do. And so, to the extent that those embrace their wickedness, and gave in to sin without attempting to flee from it, or even at times like Joseph did, getting away, showing an attempt to be a good person in spite of yourself, whether it's at the end like the thief who died with Jesus, or whether it's, <clears throat> again, during your life. Making mistakes, you get back up, you try again, right? You're not glorifying a, a, a sinful life. You're not embracing deeds of wickedness like Jesus talks about in John 5. Those who be resurrected to a resurrection of life, others to a resurrection of judgment. 
That's what the end of Revelation is talking about. After the thousand years, everybody comes up. Those who fall to Satan on earth are destroyed. Everybody is brought up before the white throne judgment. Because what is everyone must stand before the judgment seat of God. And so that's why the, that resurrection doesn't happen until later. And that's when those who are asleep and who embrace wickedness, like Jesus said in John 5, are told, nope. You did not, you did vile things. So you're here now as a resurrection of judgment, just like Jesus said. And those who did good things are given a resurrection of life. And we don't know to what extent or whether participation or involvement or life begins at that point in heaven or on earth. Because we're now at the very end. We know that the earth continues, a new heaven, a new earth. All these descriptions were given. But, you know, to read into them too much beyond what we can see and piece together in a reasonable manner is often what leads to the very same problems we see in groups like Watchtower. This attempt to overdefine things in a way that doesn't fit the essential teaching of the text. And so we try to be cautious. We try to represent the teachings of the Bible by putting three things above all else, <clears throat> one God the Father, Jah, Jaol. Some say Jehovah, Yahweh. We try to be accommodating because we're here to get along. We're not here to create divisions or to blaspheme God's name. But <clears throat> I encourage you to take a look at the evidence for the pronunciation of the name. And regardless of how you say it, uh, the name Jah, Yah, we speak English, so Jah, is an easy way to avoid all that stuff. I encourage you to do so and to look at the pre-Christian evidence that Jesus is the biblical Messiah. I have numerous videos and I have many more to come. To look at evidence datable, datable well before Jesus was born. <clears throat> Excuse me. That talk about things uniquely fulfilled in him and in the times in which he lived and taught in the Bible. You can dispute anything and that's okay too. You don't have to believe like we do. I treat everybody the same way. Whether you're a normal person, a pervert, unless you're breaking the law, right? Then shh, shh, we get the paddy wagon, you're out of here. <laughs> but if you have an abusive lifestyle that's approved, at least by law, right? LGBTQ, um, pervert, homo stuff. Hey, you know, I'm not here to enforce morality in a society that's given up. But I'm not here to approve abusive conduct and support the lie that misusing your body is a good idea. Sorry. What I am here to do is to try to help you and me and anybody, especially those who are recovering from Watchtower, because many, like us, were in Watchtower because we believe very similar critical biblical teachings. The ones I just mentioned, one God the Father, Jesus, golden rule, you and me. They basically believe those things, but they don't enforce them or associate them with the right things. Everything is the same in Watchtower. Whether you reject the governing body as especially appointed in 1919 as faithful and discreet slave um, to represent Christ Jesus on earth and have authority over all his belongings, or whether you believe that one God, the Father, is the right theology, it's the same thing. <clears throat> you reject one is the same in Watchtower if you reject the other. With us, that's not the case. We're not that way, right? We, we do learn from each other. Some of us take the lead. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we're not here to put ourselves in a position where you have to follow us to be approved by God. No, our mission is to help you to be approved by God, right? The whole purpose of me doing what I, I do, as I mentioned earlier, is not for money. It's for helping you to understand how you can be a normal person, a person who has basically a normal life, right? Unless you have some exceptional life. Either way, most people just want to have a normal life and feel like they're satisfied spiritually and connected with God 
Well, that's what we're supposed to do. In Revelation, it says that the dragon, the text we're reading, Revelation 11 through 13, <clears throat> excuse me, and others. <clears throat> it says he goes off to wage war, right? And he, he attacks those who what? Have the work of bearing witness to God and following Jesus. I have a video on that too. This is the work. Got a guy carrying a big snake. <laughs> it's one of those videos. It probably, you know, it doesn't get a lot of views, but I thought it was a good video. Anything spiritual, in my opinion, is good, though. So that's the work, right? That's the work. The work is to bear witness to God and Jesus. Follow their commandments. What do they command us? Treat each other the way you want to be treated. Love your neighbors yourself. I worship God in spirit and truth. One God the Father, only true God. My God and your God. Right? But we know we have to get along with those two. It's hard sometimes, right? We get a lot of groups, not just Watchtower. Right? We have to deal with a lot of fallout from people who are still committed to Watchtower. They see us, right? They see us using these things. They know me from my debates and my writings. And they're like, what are you guys doing, right? What is what do you think we're doing? Right? We're here to promote God, Jesus, and, and the golden rule. What are you doing? You're over there with that group that is clinging to this chronology and interpretations of prophecy that make no sense. And you're letting them tell you we're terrible and they're good, right? They're to be trusted 100% while they continue telling these lies. While they continue misreading, for example, even texts that aren't prophetic or chrono chronological, right? Matthew 18. We've been trying to get to it. Let's go to it. Matthew 18. <laughs> right? We've been, we, of course, we're just uh, enjoying our company and time together as Christians, right? Remember, this is a memorial special because it's the same time as Watchtower, and we want people who are more familiar with Watchtower to at least feel like they're participating. It's often something, it's a big deal in Watchtower, and it's something that even those who aren't fully committed or go regularly, it's something they'll still go to because it just seems to keep you connected to God in some way. It's very important, not again, for even fringe members. And people are very motivated to attend. And that's okay. We're not here to, if, you know, I don't agree with the way Watchtower does it, and I don't agree with the pressure, like we talked about earlier, that makes people feel like they can't partake, you know, and they've created this chronology and structure where it really can only have a certain amount of people alive at any time, at least for a while, and, and, and and most can't partake if they're still going to have the separation be of the anointed and great crowd of Christians, right? Unless, again, it, it seems to me an easy fix. Watch, Tom, I'm going to try to help you here. I've brought this up before, but the easy fix to this for you on the memorial watchtower is just to somehow explain that according to John 6, every Christian is supposed to partake and that even Christians who are part of the great crowd should partake. Okay, now it's still going to look terrible and you're going to have to explain why you didn't see this before and it doesn't make any sense because again, you were following a, a false interpretation of this end time group of the great crowd. You keep telling everyone has been here because you keep telling them, telling everyone that the end is, is going to be here any moment. So that's never going to stop. Well, you know... <laughs> seems to me you should be able to come up with an interpretation that allows everybody to at least partake. I think at some point they're going to have to do that. I don't know how they can avoid that. That'll at least solve one problem there. They're still going to have to come up with this. There's still a lot of problems, right? There's still the whole, how did they don't even know who their brothers are. How are they not his brothers if they're Christians? And... And the whole washing of the robes, if they're all ready, right? If you're prepared to die, watch our people. If you're prepared to die for Jesus, you should be partaking, okay? You're not doing yourself any favor by avoiding the, the blood and body. If you're already prepared to go that far, if that's your faith, and most of you claim that it is, 
I don't see how you couldn't think of yourself as selves as Christ brothers. I mean, it's the only it's it's the ultimate demonstration of faith. So I do understand that the whole interpretation by Watchtower again of chronology and end times and seeing this great crowd differently of it's led to this point, but I think that that's fixable at least from Watchtower's perspective. Won't look good, but that's fixable. Some other things are not fixable though, but whatever betterments we can make, right? See, I want things to be better there in Watchtower. I don't think it's going to ever fully get to the point where it, it should have remained, but that's why we keep it real simple, right? We have a core group of three things Jesus said are necessary for life that the Bible teaches inclusive of him for life. And then everything else is still important, but in a way that we allow for individuals to choose and be judged, just like the Bible teaches. You're not getting away. There's no getting away here. You're more accountable directly, and in a way you should have always been accountable versus somebody else. And again, unless you're directly sinning. Speaking of which, Matthew 18 Let's bring it up right here. Right? So, yes, we need to be aware of things. But we shouldn't be running around trying to make life hard for people. Right? We shouldn't be running around, well, you do this, you do that. It's like nonstop, right? We talked about earlier, I was mentioning before, we have not only issues, right, with people in the Watchtower. They think we're like apostates, all this stuff. Then we get the Trinitarians, right? So it's just not going to be a simple thing. But but that's why it's important to remember this. Okay, because because in one sense, I say it's not a simple. It is a simple thing. It just becomes hard. Like every simple thing. Right? Elements of conflict we allow into our lives make it hard. But th- tell me this is hard. Does this look hard to you? Oh, wait a minute. Let me bring up a better view. We're in Matthew 18, if you want to follow along in your own. But we've got a multi-version here we're going to bring up. At the Bible Hub, it's got multiple uh, versions. We like this view here. It gives us the NIV at the, st- at the top. It's not our favorite translation, but we work with whatever. Unless we see an obvious problem. Right? So we know his disciples start asking him about who's the greatest, right? These questions, these things, right? It's like today, who's this, who's that? It just is so easy to forget. So then he called a little child to him and he placed the child among them. Let me see if I can make that a little bigger. No. So remember, they're, they're arguing about who's the greatest in the kingdom of the heavens. It's not too far off from what we argue about today when it comes to the Trinity and other stuff, right? Who's, who's greater? Who's this? Who's that? Oh, yeah, it's necessary. I know because we have to at times and people, oh, but no, it really isn't. And this is what's simple, isn't it? He called the little child to him and he placed the child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And that's very important because sometimes we get lost, right? We're going to finish the rest of that chapter in just a moment. But, you know, when you think about ways you can be effective as a Christian, right? We already know, and we're going to get to it more in a moment, where we meet together. We talked about it earlier, similar to the Christians, early second century, right? Pliny writing to Trajan. They met every morning. They partook. They agreed not to do certain things that were immoral. These are simple ways that you can express your faith 
and maintain a spiritual contact, even with just one other person, it will help you. It may seem hard at first, especially if you're alone, but it's not so hard, especially when you're not alone. And you may at times think, well, how else can I express myself? Well, at times it's as simple as welcoming a child in Jesus' name, right? What does he say right here? Look at this right here. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Okay, so would you like to meet Jesus? All right, so the next time you see a young child, why don't you welcome that child in Jesus' name? Now, I'm not saying you should sound, you don't want to sound sanctum. You know, you have to be a little careful, but you also have to be yourself. You may have to work on it a little because expressing faith sometimes, if you're not used to it, but just look at it, right? What if someone said, hey, I'm going to give you an opportunity today to meet Jesus. Would you like to do that? <laughs> okay. So then they bring in the little child, right? Well, that's what he says. Do you see how easy this should be? This isn't supposed to be hard. This is a easy thing at its core. And what's more is that it's actually things that are good and make you feel good, not routine or like you're just doing it to be no, you know, to, to, to check a box, right? No, this is meaningful work. This is actually doing stuff that will better your world, your environment, children. You don't think that matters? If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, like the young child he just talked about, to stumble, it would be better for them to have hung a large millstone around their neck and to be drowned into the depths of the sea. Silver pedos, or anyone who stumbles these children, but you pedos are like the worst. <laughs> Gone, right, child, child abuser? You're out of here. Gone. Right? Unless you, you're going to have to really throw yourself for, on full repentance here. Right? Become an advocate for no pedo. Right? Maybe there's a way. We'll see. Verse 7. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Right? All this stuff. All these distractions. All these people telling us what to do. And they don't even know what to do. Or they're obviously doing it wrong. Why do we have to listen to them? We don't. We don't have to listen to them. Such things must come, but woe to the person through whom they come. They're going to get it, everyone. They don't. Remember, we talked about it earlier, and, and I think you'd all agree. There's no benefit of, for perversion or distortion. These things don't make things better. We're not missing out on a way of life that somehow, if you're not a Christian, like, Hey, if you give up this whole Bible thing and you come over here, yeah, it's going to be just unbelievable. No, we'll actually die sooner and probably perv. So what are you talking about? Right? Even if it's all wrong, and I wouldn't do it just if I thought it was all wrong, but I mean, if it was still wholesome and good, right? I'd still follow the golden rule. But there's so much more for one and two. It's just that, look, there's no... No one's being hurt here. They just don't like that we do what they don't do. And that's their problem. That's not our problem, whether it's Watchtower or Perv, right? If they have a problem with us doing one, two, and three, and then following Matthew 18 or other clear sections of the Bible, well, that's their problem. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off, right? It's not your problem. He's, I, we're talking about figurative things here in a way that still make a very serious point, do they not? In other words, why are you letting it become a problem? Right? If that Okay, so even if it's your hand, if your hand is making you stumble, remember, he's not saying, you know, just cut off your hand for no reason, right? 
He's talking about stumbling. Right? He's talking about you failing. If something comes between you and failing, you cut it, you got to get it out of there. You know, you don't keep it around to keep failing, right? You get rid of it, you get out of there. So it should be the same in almost any area of life. If something is making you fail, why would you keep doing it? I don't know of anything where that would make a benefit, right? But yet people do, right? Whether it's abusive uh, lifestyles or, or practices or, or beliefs. They clearly have a negative. Right? You can like see it, right? You can tell it's damaging you, man. <laughs> Woman, whatever. Or it doesn't connect with the evidence you're even talking about, right? So you're following something you don't need to. Either way. Jesus says, if that bothers you, you should cut it off. It's better to enter life, right? Remember what he said, what is necessary for life? Love Jah, your whole, your God with your whole heart, soul, and mind. Neighbors yourself. He said it. He's the Messiah, Savior. It's better to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. That's how serious we should treat things that make us fail, Right? We're, failing is never an option, is what he's saying. We're not here to collapse and give up. If you've come this far in your faith and you still can see the good reasons for believing in God, Jesus, the golden rule, then that's enough to let go of things that'll only destroy you faster. Like I said, are we missing something? <laughs> Is someone got something that uh, they'd like to share? You know, I am very much open to anything someone would show me that says, hey, right here, you're going to be a happier person. You're going to have a better life. You do this. Uh, no, I think it doesn't. Then no, <laughs> I haven't seen that yet. <clears throat> if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out. Throw it away. Right? We're not obviously wanting people to physically hurt themselves. And I don't think that's what he's saying either. Why, what he's saying is, if you've got these problems, something is holding you back. It might hurt. Yeah. You don't think an eye would hurt? You don't think cutting off a hand would hurt? Yeah, <laughs> it hurt really bad. What's better, that pain or or losing your whole body and dying? I right, will hope for neither one, but either way, the answer is clear. Sometimes things are going to hurt a little bit. Did anyone really think being a Christian was going to be easy? All the time? We know that's not true. Sometimes our decisions or sometimes our circumstances or things that happen to us put us in a position where we have to make painful choices. Now, to be one of us, you're not going to have that problem. If you believe in one, two, and three, that's about it. Right? No one can really judge you beyond that unless you do something like you're going to see in a moment that is a, a sin against your brother or sister or someone. Something obvious you're doing that doesn't line up right, with who you say you are. But if you're not at that point and you're just struggling with stuff, well, cut it off. It might take a while. Keep working on it. It's better to live with a slight deficiency, we'll say, than to just totally collapse in every way. Verse 10. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. So you pedos, it is game over. Uh, you better stop, you better run, and you better confess in every way possible. Right? It's, it's over. Uh, you should never have felt comfortable abusing a child. Anyone, whether you pedoed them or not, um, 
We've got a lot of problems with child abuse today. We've got a bunch of abusive teachers. We've got pathetic and ridiculous politicians. And we've got religious leaders who don't care at all. That is not how we are taught. Verse 18. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Not in every version, but still a true statement. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? 13. And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. Does it sound like one person means a lot <clears throat> to Jesus? Well, if <clears throat> we would all agree one sheep matters a lot, like he's saying, we would. And we know that's true. If we lost a sheep, right? We know we got the 99. Well, where's the one? Let's go get it. One does matter a lot. Try not to forget that. One means a lot. In the same way your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. <clears throat> if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault. <clears throat> hey, uh, I noticed you did this here. Uh, I saw you... Uh, Steal that. That's, um, you know, stealing's wrong, right? Oh, yeah, you know, it's just weak. <laughs> I'm really sorry. i uh, a little short on money, and I, and I, I made a mistake. I understand. It's just, you know, maybe I can help out, and if you have a problem next time, I mean, check with people and don't feel like you have to resort to crime. Looks like there was no damage here, so let's just let it go. You're remorseful. Move on, right? We don't do this whole ridiculous, unbiblical, judgmental committee, right? And uh, secret meetings and non-disclosure. <clears throat> you go and you point out the fault. Just the two of you. Okay, if you don't do this... You are not a Christian. It's that simple, right? There shouldn't even be the very first thing someone, if, if someone comes to you and says, hey, so-and-so did or does this. <clears throat> the very first thing a Christian should do is say, did you go to that person and tell them that? And if that person says, no, I, I I, wanted to come and tell someone else, you say, no, no, no. Where does the Bible say to do that? The master said, you, just the two of you. Okay, so you, you have already now, you've sinned against, he sinned against you or that person did, right? How interesting. They put themselves in their own trap. If someone comes to you first and not the person that they let that sinned against them, now they have sinned against you by involving you in something, or they sinned against really that person they were supposed to go to, right? But they've also involved this other person. So in one sense, I think they've <laughs> done them a disservice for sure. <clears throat> Either way, if you don't follow this pattern, it's not acceptable. There is no other pattern. This is the master's pattern. If someone sins against you, 
You and that person, that's it. Just the two. Talk about it. If they listen, you have won them over. How nice, right? Isn't that the goal? Is your goal to create a problem? To make divisions? Well, then you're the problem, right? Then we're going to deal with you. We're going to bring this. Why are you doing this? You didn't follow the master? You see what it says right here? Can you read Matthew 18? Did you understand that? Why didn't you follow it? Right? So these are real simple things. We'll identify problems real quickly. Right? If you don't want to be put in that position, I, su I suggest you listen to the master. This isn't me talking. This is me saying, before you start talking, you need to follow the program. The program isn't any man. It's the master. If they will not listen, you go to the person, they committed an obvious sin, you have evidence, you know it, they know it, there's no question. They don't They don't accept it, they deny it, right? It's on tape, it's on video, <clears throat> or you just, you saw it, and you can get the video, right? Maybe there's circumstantial evidence. It's hypothetical, but it happens. They won't listen. You take someone else, one other person, one or two, it says, I'm sorry. Take one or two others. So now you would have as many as two or three with you. Talking to this person who allegedly did this sin. And then it says that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. So this group of two or three would be able to say what was said. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church, the congregation, the gathering of Christians in that area. And if they refuse to listen even to the church or congregation, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. In other words, they're obviously not a Christian. If they're going to keep lying or keep promoting a way of a life that's obviously, again, something explicitly wrong, and they won't listen, well, they're effectively telling you they're not a Christian. So just treat them like a person who's not a Christian. Right? How do you treat people who aren't Christians? Well, you're no, you're normally probably nice, even if they're people who are anti-Christian, right? We don't want to get close to them, right? We know the dangers, but we treat everybody the way we want to be treated. That means we treat them respectfully, even if we think they're perverts, right? We're not going to justify your perv, no. That's no, but we'll treat you normally, right? If we're at work somewhere else, we just do our job. You do your job. I help you. You help me. <clears throat> Nothing else, at least for me. And I've already tried the other way. It doesn't work. Trust me. <laughs> you can find it on your own if you want. You hang out with perverts, they're going to want to perv you. It's that simple. Now you think you can help more. They want help. That's different. Like this here, right? Are they going to listen? Someone going to listen or are they not? Well, someone who won't listen, you can't do anything with them. So you just let them go. People that listen, well, then you help them out. Everyone's getting along, doing the right things. You're good to go. So you have to watch your congregation. You have to watch your gathering of Christians. You don't have to make it a, a spectacle. You take one person, you take two or three, you take two others. And then um, you guys talk about it. You should be able to resolve it unless the person is just not a Christian. In which case, you bring the whole congregation so they all know, hey, look, we're trying to work this out here. There's no secrets here. We want to help, but this person is doing these things and they're murdering and they won't admit it. Right? They got to call it. It's an extreme example, but we're talking about things that are clearly against the Bible. These aren't speculation-based things, right? When you, we talk about groups like Watchtower, their interpretation of prophecy or chronology or this whole great crowd partaking or not partaking, that's on the same level as murder, stealing, lying. <laughs> if you don't agree with them, well, th they would form this committee on all that stuff, everything. Whereas with us, it's like, okay, these are just the simple, very clear directives of the Bible. Are you sinning against this person in this way? We're not going to be pulling a Matthew 18 thing on something that's not clear. There's nothing you can use. How is it a sin if it's not clear? So, but with Watchtower, right, whatever they teach that you don't agree with is a sin. <laughs> the way they react and, and essentially try to follow this text, but in their own perverted way, right? 
doing these secret committees. That's not how we do things. Right out in the open so everyone can tell. Right? Don't you want people to know what's going on here? They should. If they're going to treat them as a non-Christian, they should probably know and hear from them what's going on. It's the only way any of the parties involved are going to be able to fairly assess what's going on. That's why Jesus taught it. Matthew 18, Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father, Jah, in heaven. So how important it is for you to find at least one other person and that both of you are doing the right things in a way that, while not perfect, at least represents an attempt to follow Christianity in the ways that make sense and that help people, like these children, right? Not stumbling these children, right? Do you want to spend all your time arguing about who's the greatest in heaven? Or do you want to spend your time making sure that these little children don't get stumbled by these pedos and spiritual perverts? If you're following the master, I think you know what your priority is. And if you agree, right, if we come together and we stand as Christians and pray through Jesus' name for the Father to do things, that is what will happen. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Now notice, he doesn't say where two or three are praying in my name. There I am with them. And that might be involved, right? It's, of course, obvious, but he just says where they're gathered, right? Suneg menoi. Dua a tris suneg menoi. Two or three gather in my name. Gathering, to, coming together, right? Whether it's partaking or briefly saying a prayer or briefly just sharing a moment with each other and seeing how the other person is doing, right? Not every single time we come together do we have to make it even a semi-formal occasion, right? If you can, you want to, great. Early Christians did. They tried to every morning, like we talked about, playing the Trajan. Uh, but you can also just See how someone's doing sometimes, right? Express an interest in their well-being and try to help them in their circumstances in whatever way may be appropriate. We're not here to make it hard on people or to take advantage of others or let them take advantage of us. But when it comes to people we see regularly that we're near, you know, it's a little bit different, right? We're more involved in things that happen to them, maybe see things that we can do that will encourage them. Or two or three are gathered in my name. There I am. You want to meet Jesus? I've got two ways. Number one, greet a child in his name. Right there. You didn't realize it. You just met Jesus. And I'm not kidding. Another way. Have at least one other Christian and gather together with that person in his name. You know, so many people would jump at the chance to meet Jesus. And there are two ways you can do it. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sisters who sins, my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle his accounts with his servants. He began to set, hit the settlement. A man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. He said he wasn't able to pay the master or that he and his wife and his children all he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, his servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. Servants' masters took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when the servant that went out 
When that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants. He owed him a hundred coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe. Fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient. I'll pay it back, just like this guy did. But he refused. Instead, he went off and he had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. When Jesus finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went into the region of Judea to the other side of the Jordan. You know, that last part's very important, especially when it comes to meeting for the memorial and the partaking of Jesus' body and blood, because those symbolize our forgiveness, right? They're what Jesus gave on our behalf, according to the Bible, to redeem us from our sinful life, which we inherited from Adam. That's why it's called the last Adam. And so we are given forgiveness versus having to give sacrifices of our belongings or animals in the case of the ancient times when animals were the most important thing you had. Giving them up represented a cost. They were giving up their livelihood to be temporarily forgiven and to maintain a relationship with God through Israel in a special way. But the the permanent sacrifice for Christians is the body and blood of Jesus. So we don't have to maintain this temporary relationship with God. We have a permanent relationship with God through our faith in that sacrifice, which we show, since faith without works is dead, by the things that we do, by the things that we teach. We can't do it perfectly. That's why we need the sacrifice in the first place. But we can do things like Joseph. We can do things like individuals who stood up like Paul and who corrected things. Right When they saw even Peter, other apostles, acting racist or otherwise, they said, no, no, we're not going to do that. That's not how we do things here. No, we're not going to tell people on the one hand to believe in Jesus and on the other hand start showing preferential treatment to people who look like us or who are part of our ethnicity. No, we're not going to do that. And so what we try to do is to help others to do just that, to worship one God the Father, to honor the Son he sent forth as the Messiah, and to follow the golden rule. We show our faith in his sacrifice by partaking of the wine and bread, which he partook of in celebration of the Passover. But he changed it. And in the New Testament, we can see that this was not really an annual celebration. But if that's how you want to do it, again, we're not here to create rules for people. I think part of the most difficult transition for many people, especially from Watchtower to us, is is really going to be not judging people because it's not so much that that's how you are. It's just what you've been taught. There's so many things that people have to do a certain way, and that's not correct. And maybe maybe in one way it is correct, and, and you are doing it right in certain ways, but the Bible doesn't give you the authority to make what you think correct law or a standard for judgment unless it's an explicit thing that the Bible condemns. 
in the New Testament for Christians or rises up to the level of things that we believe lead to life that Jesus said, literally taught and said, you do this, you get life. You know, everything else is really something that you're going to answer to the master for. And as we just saw in our reading of the end of Matthew 18, you don't want to have to answer to the master in a bad way. There's no reason to do that. Now, people like false teachers and liars, they're going to do that. And they're going to pay. You know why? You know why they're going to pay? Because they're the ones whom Jesus came and forgave that debt. And who turned right around and didn't forgive others. His judgment will be correct. And so we partake of the bread representing his body that he gave on our behalf that as Christians we show our faith in and in his return by partaking. and the wine representing his blood. <clears throat> I thank you all for joining me for our memorial celebration. Again, we usually meet every Saturday and partake after those meetings, those live shows. I will be taking April off, though. I have a lot of work and other things and local activities I'm a part of. But I'll be back the first weekend of May. I put a notice up in the community usually. I post a lot of things sometimes. Some of them might not be to your liking all the time. But again, it's not about pleasing everybody. It's about trying to be me, living as a Christian, helping other people do the same thing, standing up for the truth where I can, but not engaging in so many conflicting things that I don't have any joy left. <laughs> That's not really what I'm after. I do want to help people to maintain their spiritual strength, to continue their faith, to have a relationship with God through Jesus. And so to that extent, I do try to involve myself with individuals and be regular in this, in this way. I'll be back in May. We'll pick up in our study of Revelation 11 through 13. And then looking ahead a little bit as we get closer to summertime, June or so, we should be back to our series on the angels of Ja'ol in the Bible. Let me just briefly say hello to everybody. Who we got here? Very nice group. We got Sonia, GL, TKS, <laughs> DJ, DJ Noel, looks like. Jason. Kanani Carvajal. I apologize if I didn't pronounce that correctly. Aloha from Hawaii. Betsy, very nice. Guys are on fire. So good to see you. Tarantula Clan, outstanding. Emoji fire. Bankhead, very nice. <laughs> it was Betsy. Betsy's on fire. Exile Reviews, good to see you. Oh, you guys are on fire. I'll check this out later a little bit more. <laughs> AJR, what happened to Nice N14? Yeah, well, you can ask Watchtower about that. I'm just doing it on this day because it's the day they chose. And we don't really use that day for why we do it, AJ, but... You know, people want to do it on that day that we're not opposed to it, but there's nothing that says we have to do it on that day. <laughs> See who else we got here. You guys are on fire. 13 above. Greetings to you. Who else we got here? You guys are uh, very active. Will Power and Rockabye. <laughs> yeah, a lot going on. Will Power, a warm greeting from Egypt. Very nice to have you. 
Got a lot of people here tonight. Very good, good to see you all. And again, since I'm going to be gone next month, I should have time. I fixed the issue with my uh, clipping software so I can get some clips up that I've been waiting to, to do, but I had some issues. So anyway, I apologize for that. But um, I got a lot going on in April. So I'm going to take April off. I will try to get some uploads. I have some good uploads if I can get to them. And I've got some other publications, including the translation stuff pending. So a lot happening. Stay focused. Stay strong. I'll be back first weekend of May. And until then, may Jah bless you. In Jesus' name.